Welcome to WooCommerce Live, Season 2, Episode 2. I'm Jonathan Wold, and I lead community initiatives here at WooCommerce. With me is my co-host, Noel Stiegs, a developer and a volunteer here in the WooCommerce community. Good to see you, Noel. Good to see you too, Jonathan. We've got another great guest for today's topic, and that will join us a bit later. And on today's episode, we're going to be continuing our eight-part series focused on helping you go from idea to your first customer. Today's topic is going to be finding a problem to solve. We'll talk about that a bit later. So we're going to start off, as we always do, with our community spotlight, looking at some wins across the WooCommerce community and sharing some of our favorite resources. Then we'll jump into the topic and we'll have a live Q&A after that you'll want to stick around for. So, Noelle, what, uh, what wins do we have to celebrate in the community this week? Uh, this week, they're just so cool. Um, first, I want to shout out to Abdul. Um, he sells handmade shoes in Pakistan, and he launched his website um, that you're seeing now last week. He already got his first orders, and wow. uh, I just love this super clean site. You know, it just shows what you want to know. The product phot photography is great. It's consistent. It shows it off really well. Um, yeah, I think it's well done. So Abdul, congrats on the launch. And um, yeah, it just sounds like kickoff went really well. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Awesome. What do you got next? Um, so I also want to talk about Matthew Hartnett and because he's shared such an ins inspiring story on, on our Facebook group. Um, so he said, um, one of his businesses closed and he was looking for a new challenge. So he looked for a fudge recipe and he started making fudge and um, gave it to school with the kids and the parents tried and the kids tried and somebody mm -hmm. asked if it was for sale. And a few markets later um, actually decided to put a new kitchen in, get that licensed, you know, really like plunge deep into it. And um, yeah, then he launched his website and he's he's been doing so well with the sales. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, for me, this is really what it's all about. I just love stories like this. Somebody taking a plunge and making making something that wasn't there before. And, you know, I, I just think, yeah, I think it's absolutely lovely. This looks delicious too. <laughs> yeah, I want some. I know. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. What else? What else do you have? Um, there's also Mick Effort. Um, Mick built this fully custom bike site um, with like two thousand bikes. Wow. So they did. They did really. They did really, really well. Um, because of COVID, everybody wants to, you know, get out, you know, escape everything, and hop onto the bike. Um, and I think it's really easy to see like when you land on the website, what it offers, you know, I really like the overview that they've done with the green menu. And then also at the top, you have the bar that says, um, same day dispatch, free shipping, 4.8 yeah. Google rating. That's like, it's like you've got all the things that you want to know kind of like in one place. And I mean, the more trust, the better. Right. So yeah, yeah I think that's really well done. That's, that's fantastic. These are great stories, and and yeah, it's always awesome to see new new folks getting their thing up and running, and uh, and and having a community to support them and, and being able to do so. This is yeah, and people all over the world as well. I mean, this was now Pakistan, UK, and Australia. That is, yeah, to me, that just shows how broad the community is. That's fantastic. I would like to spotlight one of the the meetups. So we have meetups happening all around the world. They're fantastic. And right now they're virtual, which gives folks a, an incredible opportunity to jump around and experience meetups that you might not be able to get to otherwise. So this week we're highlighting the Austin meetup. They, they're a fantastic meetup. They've been going for a long time now and you can join it virtually. So uh, their upcoming topic is focused on Cyber Monday. So I want to check that out and and, uh, and say hi when you get there. Awesome. Well, let's switch over to uh, some of our resources. Uh, first up, we have, um, uh, let's see, uh, Do the Woo. Do the Woo. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Bob Dunn, he relaunched Do the Woo, uh, I think sometime last week. Um, it's a personal favorite of mine. You know, I love the podcast. It's incredibly diverse. Um, and you know, he wants to bring all like the builders together. 
Um, and from what I understand, it's like it's it's developers, but it's also people who are building for themselves. Yeah. And there's really something for everyone there. And I just, yeah, I love how it's like, I believe with a new website, there is really a much higher focus on community, which I love. Yeah. And I think it's worth saying about this too. It is it is focused on builders and developers. Uh, if you, for those of you who are new and doing it yourself, this can be a great way to to meet folks that are doing building. But also, just if you're curious, which I highly recommend to be curious, it can be great to just have some context for what goes on in the world of folks who are building on WooCommerce, and that's that's what that's focused on. So that's awesome. Next up. Um, next is six ways to use customer reviews to accelerate sales. Um, so I said before, you know, trust is everything in sales. And this post is about the power that the reviews have to persuade people to make a purchase. Um, I mean, did you know that more than half of the people say that reviews are really important when they make a purchase decision yeah. wow. and nine out of 10 say, an online review to them is like the same as like a person, it counts as much as like a personal recommendation. So those are some really strong, st strong stats. Um, so yeah, you must make sure to go to the blog and have a look at which of these ways you can adopt for your business to leverage those reviews and drive more sales. That's fantastic. And last but not least, um, one of the one of the things that we like to highlight, this is a newer section on the WooCommerce site, is the WooCommerce success stories, where we've got some great stories. And you picked out um, this one, which was super, <laughs> which is super cute. Anything you want to it's say? It's so cute. <laughs> yeah, so this is all about like the personal experience, right? Like more and more goods in the world, I think, are becoming more personalized. Yeah. So with this one, um, the parent can like upload a photo of their children to this magic mirror and pick a care, pick a story, pick a character and leave like a, a message in the book for the child, like as like a keepsake. And then it's all about the child becomes the hero of the story. Oh. And I just think it's, that's such a wonderful idea. You know, it will make, I'm sure it will do really well now with the holidays. Oh, it's just around the corner, isn't it? So that is so cool. That is so cool. Awesome. Those are great resources. So before we get started into the, into the topic, I want to welcome our guest. So Victor, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So yeah. excited. So Victor hey, Mysterio, uh, is a lifelong entrepreneur and co-founder of an e-commerce business in the food industry. He found a problem to solve. They're focused on providing healthy alternatives for people who love sweets. Now, Victor has had quite a bit of experience finding problems to solve and I invited him on today to share some of his perspective. Victor, it's great to have you. Thanks for making it. Hey, thanks. I'm excited to share what I've learned along this journey of entrepreneurship. Awesome. So you've been an entrepreneur for, for a long time. What for you personally, like what draws you to it? What is it about finding and solving problems that, that has kept you coming back to it? I think for me, it's the, the almost like the control of, of my destiny that I feel. Mm. It's like life is a, a canvas and I see business as a way of painting, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a way of creating, you know, growing up uh, with parents who immigrated to the U.S. and didn't have much, if I'd asked my dad for a toy, he'd say, well, son, find a way to go make money and get it. Yeah. So I'd mow lawns, I'd do whatever, and I would figure out a way to manifest that toy. And that's what entrepreneurship gave to me. Mm. Wow. So- being an entrepreneur has its ups and downs <laughs> and <laughs> I don't know about you, but this year has uh, been, has had an especially high amount of ups and downs for all of us, mm -hmm. at least in my experience. How do you as an entrepreneur handle the uncertainty? Like what, what keeps you going? Um, you know, it's definitely a roller coaster. And at first I used to fight the roller coaster, right? I, I used to, I used to get upset when things didn't go the way I wanted, when things were uncertain. Um, I've been doing a lot of meditation, a lot of self work to almost see it as a macro level of the roller coaster is the journey, mm. right? You know, you, you've heard it said that you learn more on the way down however you want to define that. Yeah. Um, but, but it, it's, it's really, it's like, I can show you when our company's doing a million dollars and kicking butt, the kind of person I am, but who am I when things don't go well? Mm. And it's really an opportunity to really hone that person when the pressure is on, do you turn to dust or do you become a diamond? And that's where the challenge is for me. That's beautiful. 
That's beautiful. Well, so Victor here is quite familiar with today's topic and uh, is here to share some of his insights and perspectives. So let's jump to it. This series, so I'm going to bring up the screen here for a moment. Whoa, not that one. You don't really want to just see me. This series is focused on this idea of going from an idea all the way to getting your first customer. We're wanting to help folks navigate through that journey. And last week, we talked about choosing an audience and the importance of being specific, which helps you create both higher impact content and provide more value to your customers. And it also helps you differentiate your business. So you've chosen an audience. The next step is to find problems to solve. Now, all right, so what's a problem, right? It seems pretty basic, but I think it's worth just touching on for a moment. The way that like I've found it helpful to think about problems, there are things that cause us difficulty, pain, discomfort. They're not necessarily good or bad. Victor, I loved your point about like the roller coaster, right? Like sometimes in the, the difficult points is where you know the growth can actually happen. In general though, humans want to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And importantly, people also spend money like that's what, when they're spending money, they're paying to solve problems. And that's why focusing on problems is the key to providing value for the audience that you've chosen. So problems are unique to an audience. And there, I found that there are some common types of problems that can be a helpful way to sort of get you thinking about where the opportunities are. And for me, I found that thinking about problems as unmet needs can be an especially helpful way. So here's some examples. Uh, there can be physical needs, right? Last week, we talked about the example of a someone wanting to open up a restaurant in an area, right? And you could have this just general audience of, I wanna feed everyone in my city, but no, we wanna narrow that down to like, I wanna focus on folks in my city who like, Indian food, for example. And the problem that you're going for is that people get hungry. That's a physical need, right? Like people get hungry and we want to satisfy, we can have an opportunity to help satisfy that need. There's also psychological needs that help things that are keeping people from achieving their goals. They're maybe frustrated, they're feeling uninspired, they're lacking motivation. There are what we think of like cognitive needs, a lack of knowledge, they wanna learn something new, they're lacking insider perspective. There's practical needs, right? Someone has a problem where they're working on something and they're missing a part or they're missing some instructions on how to get something done. There are also like relational needs. So like you, you want to work on the relationships in your life. Maybe you need help uh, navigating that. Maybe you need some guidance. Maybe you need some, uh, maybe you need help finding a gift. So Victor, uh, what experiences have you had in identifying the problems of an audience that you that you've either chosen to work on yourself or when you've worked with merchants who are kind of going through this process what's what's yeah. that like finding problems um that's that's a great question and i guess first i'd like to start with the the mistakes that i made early on and that was getting super excited about a solution mm. and then launching it and finding out that nobody wants what i'm selling um, and, and, you know, through time, through experience, I, I did realize that it's about solving problems. So uh, to give you an example, uh, an earlier business I had, it was like a, a men's grooming, men's lifestyle blog. Hmm. And it wasn't necessarily because I had a passion for shaving or, or men's skincare. It was because I noticed online that men were asking these questions about hmm. style and grooming, questions they would not ask each other and questions they were too embarrassed to ask women about. So um, I remember going through these discussion forums and just listing out common themes of the biggest questions, biggest questions, biggest questions. That eventually turned into an ebook, mm. which eventually turned into a blog that took off and um, a lot of really cool things that happened in my life. That's one way. The, uh, the cookie company. So we ended up launching a ketogenic cookie company. And what was interesting about that is as opposed to the men's grooming site where I found a market, I dove down, I understood the market and I sold this, I was actually the market. Mm. So it, it, in a lot of ways, it was a lot easier because me and a buddy, we went on this low carb ketogenic diet and I lost like 40 pounds, like, like the weight just melted off and people were asking, wow, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I felt great, but I remember having coffee with my buddy who became my business partner 
And we're like, you know what? We really miss sweets. We miss <laughs> cookies. <laughs> and and it was our our specific problem that we were trying to solve. So you know, we went into his mom's kitchen with no baking experience to whip up these cookies that fit the macro nutrients of the ketogenic diet, but still tasted like a regular cookie. And I mean, we can talk later about how we actually tested the idea to, to see that it worked. But the two buckets are find problems. And the thing is with Yahoo, with Quora, with all of these websites, it's never been easier with social media to find problems and find questions people are asking and use that to develop a solution. Yeah. Or the other bucket is you look internally and find out what problems you have. Personally, I like finding out what problems I have because um, I find that I get more excited about what I'm selling mm. and I have more energy and more stamina to keep going when things are challenging. And it's great. What we talked about last week too is like it can, it can be choosing yourself as an audience or as part of the audience can be really helpful because you already have the insights. The key there is figuring out what internal similarities that you have with others. Because like, for instance, in your case, they're like, sometimes people make the mistake of focusing on just a broad demographic. Whereas yes. like people interested in keto, for instance, can span a wide range of demographics, but they have this shared interest in health. And in your case, also finding something sweet, right? Like a lot of us yep. like, not everyone does. Some people don't care for it. I'm certainly in the support category. Uh, Noel, no, oh, go ahead. No, uh, no, no, you're right about the community. Uh, I think the community was very diehard. The, the the low carb keto community. It's almost like a like a punk rock band that has this diehard group. Yeah. You yeah. know, if they love something, they spread it and they talk about it. So be the problem, but also be in the right market. Yeah. Noel, what experiences have you had like with with finding problems in either in your own experiences or with the merchants that you've served? Yeah, so with the merchants I've served, um, and I, I mentioned this one also last week when we were speaking about the audience, um, a client of mine uh, did a Kickstarter for a doggy door that goes like basically in between your sliding door. It automatically opens. It's not expensive. It takes five minutes to install. You can take it away and there's no damage. So you know, he came across all these pain points of like, oh, but I don't really want to make a hole in my wall or how do I do this with my sliding door? Like, what must I do with a dog now? That kind of thing. And he like acted on that. And I think that was very, um, very well done. Um, I must be honest, I don't have that many examples yeah. um, in, my, in my clients because I tend to work with people who like, there for example, now a client who has a, who has a, who has a fabric store. You know, it's not it's not about solving a problem. Maybe maybe a part of that of helping to find the right fabric. Um, but that's a but that's a different that's a different yeah. story. I think part of the the thing that that to me seems important to convey here is that new entrepreneurs, new merchants, can often focus on like you set up a store and you're like, all right, I've got this. Like Victor said in the beginning here, we, we don't want to see people uh, creating solutions in search of problems because that can be super frustrating, right? Where it's like you have an idea of an audience, but you're not sure. And if you if you can really grasp this idea that people pay for problems to solve, then that can help you anchor like, okay, well, let me not just put solutions out there. I need to make sure that the things that I have in mind are actually solving problems. Now, I, I'm curious. I, I consider myself a an optimist, and one thing that I was like kind of curious about is: is this idea of being problem focused like too negative? I, I'm Victor. Like, what do you think? Um, you know what? No, it depends on how you look at it. If you look at the problems as you looking for little golden nuggets, then you would want as many problems as you could find, mm. right? So it's like, what do you do when you find the problem? And, and a problem, I mean, it's just an unmet need. I think, like you mentioned. So it's all in the way that you frame it. And, you know, I, I actually had a, I'm trying to teach my kids entrepreneurship, mm. you know, and, and I was asking friends, how, how would you teach a little kid, a five-year-old about entrepreneurship? And my entrepreneur friends were like, just teach them how to solve problems, teach uh, them, you know, so, mm -hmm. so we'll be driving around a neighborhood and my daughter will point out, let's say a yard that isn't cut or, or a house that, that isn't painted. And she'll point it out and say, oh, great. Well, you know, what can we do to help them? And I just kind of want to get her mind in that mode. 
That's awesome. I was thinking I'm going to pick on my kids for a moment because uh, it was like, oh, I'm going to, I want to go out and mow the, mow the lawns for people. I'm like, well, do you know that that's their problem? Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't you mow the lawn? <laughs> um, yeah. And, and yeah, if you can get, I love that. If you can get kids to focus on problem solving, like that's, yeah, that's, that, that's what it's about. Right. Mm. And um, okay. So, so the the general thought here is you've chosen your audience and each audience has a lot of different problems like all us humans like and again if you just think of them as unmet needs right like there's yeah. lots of opportunities so one of the things to be keeping in mind here is that you can't solve all the problems so you have to make a choice if you, you've chosen an audience and now within the realm of available problems to solve the question becomes how do you choose now the way that we tend to think about this there are like i think two guiding thoughts that i'd offer the first is as you're looking at a list of potential problems and i recommend doing exactly that like like victor mentioned early on of going through forums and taking notes of what people are bringing up so you sort of make a list of all the potential problems that you find with the audience that you're serving and then you want to start making choices and i think the first the the guiding thought is to optimize for impact Look for the problems that have the highest potential for impact to provide value to the audience that you've chosen to serve. I would say that this is a bit more often like an art than a science. And it's I found it helpful to trust your instincts here, right? Like innovation can often come from unobvious places. The second thing to keep in mind as you, you sort of look at this initial list and optimize for impact, but then let your audience tell you, right? Like, ask them what their problems are and take notes, like be, be just really curious. And, and it's not always clear to people. It's worth pointing out. Like the answers that you get as you sort of navigate that aren't always going to be, uh, people don't uh, sometimes don't know, right? Like they don't know what their biggest problems are, but if you, but just paying attention and letting them sort of lead you. So Victor, in your experience, um, yeah, what experiences have you had in choosing? Like when you take an audience, you had the the male grooming example. There were a lot of different problems that you identified. Like how did you choose between the problems? How did you prioritize? I would prioritize, um, I, I think there's two options. One is the greatest impact, which I think is very, very important. And then two is what's the lead domino? Like, what is the smallest one you can do to start building momentum? Oh, I love that. You know, because if if the biggest problem in, let's say, in the keto world is solving diabetes, well, there's a lot of ways to go about solving diabetes, but what is available to me within the next month, within the next three months that I can get started? Because you can always evolve. Like, our cookie was like 10 or 15 different versions before it was done. The, the, the men's mm -hmm. grooming site, was a grooming site that then became lifestyle that then that then grew. So focus on the biggest impact, but again, short term, what can you contribute quickly? You know what? I actually like that better. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a great thought. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's helpful to think about both of those where mm -hmm. you're, you're building towards the big greatest impact, but you're right. Like if the biggest problem is like solving diabetes for your audience, it's like, well, that might be a little ambitious to start off, but if you can build momentum in a direction, I love that. I love that. Um, what mistakes have you either made or <laughs> seen others make in choosing between problems? Uh, plenty. Um, trying to solve too many problems. So we, when, when the cookies um, started really taking off, we would get really excited, right? Excited to the point where we would launch these marketing campaigns. We were a team of three, right? And they had like 10 initiatives. They had like, we're gonna do social media and we're gonna do email and we're gonna do this. And then we're also gonna launch a new brand, a new flavor and this to the point where we would lose so much focus and be so exhausted mm. that, that, that it, it just, it wasn't worth um, the effort. So I think it was trying to solve too many things at once. So not prioritizing enough. Um, solving for things that were too far in the future, and also solving for things that were urgent but not important. Mm. You know, so customers would complain about something, and rather than being reactive, which you want to keep the customers happy, but a lot of times it would be a, um, hey, you know, can you launch these flavors, right? And, and the team would be like, well, let's go. They're telling us what they want, but we were still building out our fulfillment. We were still building out our customer journey. So it's like, how do you put these urgent needs that seem urgent 
but we know long term it, it makes more sense to optimize the, the value journey so that we can then layer on new flavors. That, so, that's a yeah. good point because, yeah, like that that urgency factor, right? Like if you, you because you can't solve them all, but it can be really tempting, especially as once you get started, then you're hearing from customers, and that feedback is really valuable. Yeah. Um. I'm going to a bit of a butcher this idea, but I think about Apple as a company and, and Steve jobs talking about like, we don't, people often don't know what they want. And a lot of times people are like, we, we want this, we want this, we want more of this. And, uh, and there's, there's a bit of a balance there, but at the end of the day, it's like the feedback comes in. It's important to hear it, to listen, mm -hmm. but yet you as the entrepreneur have to choose what, what sort of builds that momentum, what has the greatest impact. I love that. Noel, in your experience working with merchants, any mistakes that you've seen, make people make in navigating that or like mismatching a problem with an audience um not really and not really in that way if i was to approach myself like how to choose which problem to solve first i mm. would actually like go and hang out in you know in the spaces that these people then are with it's a facebook group or reddit or or whatever and then you know and over extended period of time, pay attention, maybe outright ask, ask them depending on the topic. And if you get enough engagement, you know, get your, get your data in and see what stands out. But I guess you would need quite a bit for that. Um, but I was, Victor, I'm curious, how do you differentiate um, between what is urgent and what is perceived urgent, possibly by your audience? I, I love it. I love it. Um, one way is, um, is just simplicity and just committing to less things to do. So let's say one to three main initiatives. Um, we like to set, especially if you're a fast growth e-commerce brand, you know, yearly plans hardly work. You need to plan monthly or quarterly. So, you know, once you have those objectives set, if other things come up that are not aligned, sometimes you do need to pivot. But if they come up and they're not aligned with your say top three things, that's when you really just need to need to move them aside. Uh, there's a there's a podcast I love called Masters of Scale, and there's a CEO that was talking about in the early days of PayPal, they had this thing called Let Small Fires Burn. Basically, they they had people upset at certain things, and while again they wanted to be reactive to take care of that, they focus on their on their long term vision. So that's, mm. that's the way I see it. It's, it's choose your one to three things to focus on. If something comes up that's not aligned, uh, say no. I, I think a lot of power comes from saying no. And I know early in the entrepreneurship journey, it might be yes, yes, yes. But if you really want to succeed, I believe it's about saying no more than saying yes. I love that. I love that. So the conclusion from my perspective, you've chosen an audience, you've identified some problems to solve, uh, you've as you sort through those problems, you're looking to optimize for impact. I love that idea of finding like the domino effect, finding the thing where you can build momentum. And importantly, within all of this, my, my guidance is to make sure that you're following your audience's lead, hear what they have to say, make sure that you've really, and, and hearing is not the same as doing, right? Like what we've been talking about, mm -hmm. take it all in, let them tell you what their problems are, focus on the opportunities to provide value and, and just let it build from there. Victor, anything to add? Any any other thoughts? Um, no, I mean, I, I guess, especially if you're new in the entrepreneurship game, it's just love it, love it. Like immerse yourself with with resources like this, with, with books. Um, don't be afraid to try and fail. Like it, it, I know you guys are gonna talk about experimenting and testing in the next episode, but if you try 10 things, you don't think one's gonna work. Like, like, like don't beat yourself up if what you try doesn't work. I've tried many things and anytime I try again, yeah. I get better and I get better and I get better. Awesome. Yeah, and people shouldn't people shouldn't think that it needs to be perfect. It's a big one for me, like for it to be perfect when you ship it. Rather ship it, just get started, get going yes. and, and change and, and adjust based on your findings, based on the feedback, right? I agree 100%. That's fantastic. Well, Victor, thank you for joining us today. It's fantastic to have you. Thanks for having us. Victor, where can folks learn more about you and what you're up to? Um, right now, uh, check out my my blog, uh, victormacias.com. I share some thoughts, some insights, and uh, just behind the scenes stuff on building e-commerce uh, brands. Uh, not to put you on the spot, but running on WordPress, I hope. Of course, of course, <laughs> only. 
<laughs> awesome. Day one, man. Special thanks to Donna, our producer behind the scenes, helping make all the, the things happen. And uh, that's a wrap for today's episode. We'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for watching. After the live show, we set aside time for question and answers, and I'd love to have you join us next time. Go to woocommerce.com forward slash live and sign up. It's free. You'll get notified when we go live, and you'll be part of the live audience where you could ask questions and hang out with us after. I look forward to seeing you there.